Hello art friends, Melissa here with an attempt at abstract today. Instead of collage, I'm starting this layout with lots of washi tape. We've all got washi tape, right? Probably more than we could ever use. And it was actually a piece of washi tape that inspired the color palette for today's project. I also used a couple of stencils that made getting this look really easy. I used Scribble Marks 1 and 3 by Sean Petit. So let's get started. I started by randomly placing washi tape all over the page. No real plan. In fact, this project is a lot different than most of my journal entries. I didn't really have a plan beyond the washi tape, color palette, and stencils. So no focal point and no composition at the start. So this project is a lot more intuitive and therefore I struggled a lot. But in the end, I think it turned out okay, and I'm determined to get better at abstract, so I'm just going to keep trying. As I mentioned before, the washi tape was the inspiration for my color palette, but I didn't have any paint that matched, so I had to mix my own colors. I started mixing the coral color first. I used Liquitex Light Pink and Cadmium Red Light Hue. Then I added just a little bit of the golden medium magenta. In case there are any beginners watching, I just want to let you know I'm mixing the paint on palette paper. It comes in a big 9 inch by 12 inch pad, but I prefer to work a little smaller, so I cut mine in half and it fits perfectly on this mini clipboard. You don't have to use palette paper, you can use wax paper, but when I've used that in the past, sometimes it tears. There are lots of other paint palettes as well. I like this because I don't have to clean it. I just toss it when I'm done. You can actually get palette paper and this exact palette knife that I'm using at Hobby Lobby. So right now I'm just randomly spreading the coral paint horizontally and vertically. To create the mint color, I mix the Master's Touch Ocean Green and Grass Green. Like Michael's, Hobby Lobby has their own brand of paint as well. Michael's brand is called Artist Loft and Hobby Lobby's is called Master's Touch. So what's the difference? Well, first of all, price. The Master's Touch is cheaper. But part of the reason why is because it's also thinner. It comes in a 4 ounce tube and costs around $5 a tube. I usually wait till it's on sale and get it even cheaper than that though. So just like before with the coral paint, I'm just kind of randomly spreading this mint color, no real plan. I wanted to play with texture paste for this layout, and I actually have several types. I've got semi-opaque and then the regular modeling paste. My original goal was to try the semi-opaque and at the end see what the difference was, but honestly, I totally forgot about it and I ended up, I think, covering a lot of that up. I'll have to do a comparison and test it out on a different project in the future and see if I can figure out what the difference is. I did let the paint dry before I started adding the modeling paste. It was feeling really chaotic, so I started using some super heavy gesso to knock some of this back a bit. You can see as I add it that while the super heavy gesso is not as thick as the semi-opaque modeling paste, it is definitely more opaque and covers what's underneath better. So while some of it was still wet, I decided to start making circles. And then I thought it would look good at the inside of the circle if some of the pattern underneath um, was still showing. So I started trying to wipe away some of that inside the circles. 
And now I'm trying to do that with a baby wipe, but it's gotten pretty dry in some areas and I'm having a really hard time getting it back off. I think I even tried applying the alcohol to the baby wipe and rubbing it off that way as well. What's funny is I did all this work and then in the end I'm going to end up covering the circles up with paint. But I didn't have a plan so I didn't know that I was going to be doing that. I'm just using a pencil to define some of the circles. Oh, this is where I use the alcohol. I actually have some of that rubbing alcohol in a little spray bottle. So what you do is you spray it on, you let it set for a little bit, and then you come back on and sometimes you can rub some of the paint or mediums off. I'm not going to keep playing this part because I'm going to end up covering these circles up. So now I'm coming back with the pencil again because I rubbed some of it off. So I wanted to add a little bit more color back on here now and notice that I'm using a brush now instead of the palette knife and notice how the strokes look differently. So another way you can add interest to a piece is by using different tools because the different tools are going to, you know, kind of mix it up and give it a different look. It's kind of fun after all that texture dries and you go back to using the palette knife. If you just kind of use a light touch and barely skim it over, it kind of catches on the peaks of the texture. And now I'm coming back in with a little bit of white paint. See how just little bits of the paint is catching there on that circle? That's because of the texture. I'm just using a very light touch and barely rubbing it over the page. It's kind of painful to watch. I'm really overworking this background. I've gone, you know, in between having color on there, going white, adding more color, then adding more white. And I probably should have just moved on to adding the next color and the doodling um, way before this. So now after adding all that white paint and covering up the color, I'm coming back in again with some of the coral. But honestly, you can just see this just like little specks are going on there. It's not a lot of paint. It's catching on that texture again. I kind of like that look. And this is the result of adding a little more coral on there and I really felt like I wasn't seeing enough of the washi tape so I kind of tore off little pieces of it and started placing it here and there. 
And finally, I get around to creating a shade of yellow I think will match. I'm mixing the Master's Touch Indian Yellow with the Golden Light Buzzmouth or Boozmouth. I'm not sure how you say it, yellow. Once I added the yellow, then it started feeling like, you know, I was moving on, I was getting somewhere. I should have started the yellow a long time ago. All right, we finally made it to the stenciling. This makes a really big difference in the way it looks. And again, I shouldn't have spent so much time on all those lower layers. And I should have gotten to the stenciling a lot quicker. I'm using Scribbles 1 and Scribbles 3 by Sean Petit. Makes the, making the doodle marks so easy. Love these stencils. I've used these stencils before and I am noticing I tend to gravitate toward the same shapes each time. I need to try to use some of the other shapes. I'm using a Posca pen to do the doodling now. And what you're seeing me do is pushing the tip in to try to get the paint to flow down. When I see other people use these, it makes it look like it just flows easily. And for some reason, it doesn't flow as well for me. But I mean, I still like them because it's an easy way to doodle. You're getting some acrylic paint on there. But they don't always flow well. So I thought I would try to show you real quick how I made the template for the um, long ovalish striped shape. So I'm folding it in half once and then I'm going to fold it over and I ended making I think three different sizes of these. Traced around them with a pencil to give me some guidelines and then use that Posca acrylic paint pen to fill in the stripes. I didn't do any measuring, it was just kind of a random thing. I did some doodling around some of the shapes with the Posca pen. And at this point it just felt like it needed just a little more color to finish it up. I added a little more of the coral and the green. I found the journaling in my scrapbook stash and that wrapped this project up. 
Thanks for watching. I hope you were inspired by the video and I'll see you next time.